Why hello! So this is a little bit of an impromptu video since I didn't plan on doing this whilst I'm here in Germany, but I thought I might as well go over some changes and stuff that I've been doing to my TCM whilst I've been um, over here and also just go for a drive and show you guys the difference to my previous drive test I believe I did on New Year's Eve back in the UK. So I also have on here my laptop because I now have a configuration utility for my TCM that I've written in Rust and all that, people who hate that language, okay, fine, I like it. Um, but it lets me view all the sensor data, so rather than you guys having to look at this screen here, I will actually start a screen record of the app running, and then you guys can um, view that in like a corner, I'll probably overlay that in the video anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and launch this, and get ready. So, quickly go over a couple of features of the configuration app. Um, okay, there's someone walking there. Uh, so basically, currently all that's working is data monitoring, so I can query gearbox sensors, uh, solenoid positions, CAN data, and uh, performance metrics of the TCM, so CPU usage. Um, that's really all about it right now, but this gives you some ideas to what my TCM is doing in the background in order to do what it's doing and uh, monitoring everything and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and start with querying the sensors and turn the engine on, and you'll see the RPM uh, sensors on the chart at the bottom. So that's basically the input, uh, so there's calculated RPM in red, uh, N3 raw RPM, which is like the pulse counter inside the transmission going, and the raw pulse counter of N2. And then on solenoid positions, it's basically just the PWM of each individual solenoid in the gearbox, and CAN data currently only graphs the engine torque, but there's some other data in the table. So I will go ahead and start on the solenoid so you guys can see how things go. I'll put my laptop over there put the car in comfort mode, and let's go! So I'm just going to load that down, there we go. So one of the main things that I've been working on recently is letting the engine now help out with smooth shifting. So one of the limitations that we had before was that uh, the gearbox was basically pulling everything when it came to changing gears and whatnot. Um, but the stock EGS controller actually asks the engine for a little bit of help, so I've programmed that in now. Um, the varying levels of help depending on what profile you're in and whatnot, so Comfort will ask for more help for a smoother shift and whatnot um, than a manual profile because that's like, it wants as much power as possible. Also pre-filling the clutches when changing gears also has made a huge difference. Um, some of the people in my beta tester group actually uh, requested that idea, they were like, oh yeah, the stock EGS 52 controller pre-fills. Uh, which is basically where it's removing play on the clutches before actually changing gear, so I've implemented that as well. Uh, let's just see, yep, okay. And also, um, I've been trying to reduce the flaring on this gearbox as much as possible, um, because my one still flares really badly between 3 and 4 for stock EGS, like actually driving in Germany on the stock EGS, because I've been doing that all on the Autobahn because I can't trust my own controller just yet at that really, really high speed. Um, full disclaimer, I have gone VMAX in this car. But anyway, um, the stock EGS on two occasions actually went into neutral uh, whilst I was driving, trying to go from 3 to 4 during the Autobahn, it just went into neutral, had to pull over. Um, so that was really frustrating. Uh, and it's just literally because it cannot handle the amount of flaring this gearbox does, but as you saw with that previous 3 to 4 shift, uh, my one actually limits it quite heavily. Just really not that bad. And uh, as for people who are wondering, how's driving on this side of the road for the first time in my normal car? Actually not too bad. I mean, yeah, it was pretty scary when I got into France and started driving originally, but then after, you know, a day or so, I've, it's become natural to me. It's like no different to driving back home in England. I'm actually worried about when I go back to England if I'm going to start driving on this side of the road by default, which would be quite funny, um, just coming off the channel. Anyway, I'm going to now pop the car into manual mode. There we go, that's manual. So also, one thing that I've been working on is adjustable torque converter slip. So basically the torque converter now has dynamic slip based on what profile you're in, what engine RPM is, and what your torque is producing. So higher speeds, it tries going for higher locks, so you get better efficiency. In comfort mode, there's always going to be some slip, whereas in manual mode, it tries limiting it to less than 50 RPM. I believe the stock EGS controller, even in manual, from what I was recording when I was using that, um, would try going for about 200 RPM of slip, 
even in manual mode, which was like a bit, ouch. Anyway, on the config app screen, I'm now actually gonna switch over to show the sensors. There we go. So now you can view the input RPMs. Uh, note that N2 is actually lower than the calculated RPM in gear ones and five, and I've written like a really weird piece of code which um, mathematically calculates what the real input MP, uh, RPM is based on both sensors. So yeah, it's really, really smooth right now. Okay, maybe not that. Yeah, 3 to 2 is still a little funny, but it's going to learn eventually. Because it now starts adapting. I'm going to put my camera back up a bit. There we go. And yeah, manual mode is pretty responsive as well. Um, actually, one thing that's interesting is in manual and the more sportier modes, I do less pre-filling. So because that's basically adds a delay. So in the automatic profiles, there's some pre-fill going on. So it's a little smoother, but in manual and sports where I kind of go, well, the user wants to shift as quickly as possible. I just ditch the pre-filling and just kind of slam the clutches into place. Well, not literally slam them, but you know, fairly harshly compared to comfort, which actually works really well. I mean, at, especially at high loads, you don't notice it. And also for uh, those who are wondering where I currently am, I'm in Zittau. So this is like a nice little German village, which is um, near the Polish and Czech border. So I have been to Poland. I haven't gone to Czech Republic yet. Maybe I'll do that sometime this week. And then that way this car has gone to like six different countries in the space of a month, which is pretty cool. Also, if you've noticed on my speedometer here, there is no uh, kilometers an hour. I've kept the temperature there. But it's because actually on my head unit, it displays it. So I've got like a, some code running which detects which, uh, where I am geographically and sets this speed accordingly. So currently in Europe, it set it to kilometers an hour. So I don't need to look at my cluster. I can just quickly glance down. And also to be fair, at this point, I've kind of memorized what speeds are in kilometers an hour to miles per hour. So I kind of don't even need to look at that anymore. So I've gone to 5th and you can see the N3 RPM reading went to 0 and N2 went to uh, just slightly under what the real RPM is. I'm going to pull back from this guy because he is actually going quite slowly, I don't know if he wants to turn. And now actually I'm going to go to the config app and switch over to the CAN data, but so basically graphing engine torque. I'll do that now. There we go. So the green line is minimum producible torque from the engine. Uh, the purple line is the maximum torque the engine can produce based on its limiter map. And the uh, red line is the current amount of torque or static torque that the engine is producing. So if I put a foot down, that number will go up. There we go. And come off the accelerator. change up. So yeah, this is going quite well so far. And I'll just change down and okay, I'll put my indicator out as well then. Still a little torque converter hum in third gear. I mean, I'm working on that. It's less than it used to be. So humming is basically where the torque converter vibrates at the exact same frequency as the engine. And you get this weird like humming noise coming from the torque converter. It's totally benign. It's just something I don't think some people would want to hear because they think probably their transmission is killing itself. And I'm gonna pop you back into comfort mode because we're in town now. You see on the torque graphs, these like um, the red line will drop as soon as the car starts changing gear. 
that's part of me asking for help. So basically when the engine, when the transmission wants to change up, just before it starts moving the clutches, it will ask the engine to let go a little bit, like 20%. And that makes a huge difference in A, shift speed, and B, um, shift quality, or smoothness, that one. Um, in manual mode, it will actually request more of a drop just so you get a more sudden RPM change, which it looks a lot sportier to be end user. So that again is all adjustable. Well, not yet, but I'm hoping for it to all be adjustable eventually. So in the configuration tool, you can just change everything the way you want. Um, and it's all not, and none of this is map driven. All of it is done on the fly using various equations that I've, and math models that I've been working on over the past couple of years for this. Um, so it's extremely easy to adjust. However, there are some hard-coded limits inside the TCM, so if you did modify some of the values and it went way out of spec for I know the transmission can handle, it will limit you. And you will um, get a notification, well, not a notification, what's the word? Um, you will know, well, the transmission will tell you, but you've kind of overstepped where it's happy. So, yeah. Come on. Thank you. So this is the town of Zittau now. Yeah, you saw that giant red line drop as soon as the car started changing gear and then picking back up as soon as the gear change had finished. Okie dokie, and I'll go back to showing the solenoids on here. Oh, it's sleeting, lovely. Is this snow? It looks more like sleet or hail. I can't really tell. Either way, I'll just be careful, the roads are slippy now. Yay. But in terms of shift quality now, especially in comfort, this is now finally like a daily driver TCM. Especially when in town, because before like it would be good if you were like full send on the car all the time, but at low speeds and low demand it was always a little rough, whereas uh, in my previous test drive that was, whereas now it's like totally smooth, you don't feel it. I can go. Even downshifting response in comfort is actually pretty decent now. And also, I would probably mention now that I still do have spaces available in the beta program. I still have like another 30 boards that I can give away. Well, not give away, but you know, I can give to testers who want. So if you're interested, I'll leave the form link down in the description. So actually read the description and you'll know what to do if you want to apply. There you go, there's fourth. And now I need to slow down here because there is actually a speed camera downhill. That's very evil in my opinion. Also, one thing that's interesting to me is that all speed cameras over here in Germany are facing forward. Not facing behind you like they do in the UK. So they get a picture of your face. Yeah, it's a very, very nice little village around here. I actually do really like it. And then anyway, when I get back to the UK, I've got my friend's CL55 that I want to put... Well, I've already got the TCM installed in his car, but it shifts really, really rough. Um, basically because he's got the large nag and I've got the smaller rated one so there's less so I can fine-tune the smaller gearbox better because I daily drive it so when I get back to the UK I want to apply my changes to his TCM and uh, see if it makes a difference and then start fine-tuning the large gearbox for the AMG folks
So that time, 3 to 2 was like unnoticeable. I didn't even feel it. Pretty good. <clears throat> and there's one mode that I haven't put the car in yet, which is agility, which is that one here, which basically is the the more further down on my pedal I am, the more sporty it will try shifting. So comfort is always smooth, standard is always kind of semi-smooth, manual is always harsh shifting. Agility is more like adaptive. Maybe I should turn that into the standard profile and make agility something else. Like, I don't know what people want from this TC in terms of profile, like customizability, but I'll work on it eventually. Right now, my main focus is making the gearbox smooth and consistent and better overall than the stock EGS and then after that we can start playing around with new features and whatnot. That's my plan at least. There's also one other thing as well that I want to fix is that currently the automatic logic is a little bit finicky and you can get this ping pong kind of shifting where it will go third, fourth, third, fourth, third, fourth, third, fourth all the time. If you're like at a specific, um, ex if you're at a specific uh, pedal value, then it will kind of just try doing that, which is something that I'm trying to iron out. Um, but it's still a work in progress. It's better than it was when I was in England, because in England especially, it would like always, you'd have your foot slightly on the accelerator and it just keep changing between third and fourth. Whereas now it's only like if you're semi wide open throttle, but still uphill, so the car is still decelerating. Uh, which also reminds me of a new feature I need to add, which is incline detection. So that the car knows if it's on an incline and therefore hold, or downhill and therefore hold the current gear. Or downshift to give you better acceleration. That's a little trickier, because you have to know roughly how the car should accelerate normally, but because this TCM is a drop in for everyone's car, uh, I don't really know how you'd get like a calibration value for everyone's car at once. So yeah, if I'm on this hill here, I'm going to downshift a second and then accelerate quite rapidly and see how it changes into third. See, pretty quick. 70. There we go. So one thing as well is this gearbox is currently low on fluid. Um, it's been leaking since I got to Germany and we don't really know why. I've changed the conductor plate literally yesterday and it's still leaking. I changed the electric connector, it's still leaking. Um, so if anyone has any suggestions as to why it could be still leaking, please let me know in the comments. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, but I do need to top it up with fuel, uh, with oil. And as a result of it being slightly low, I'm noticing, especially on the like really wide open acceleration, I'm hearing like a whining noise coming from a torque converter or pump. So not great, but uh, hey ho, it's still performing a lot better than the stock controller, which is kind of all I care about. I mean, maybe eventually I'll do a transmission rebuild and just see how worn the clutches are after all of this, like testing and battering through gears that you might have seen on my previous videos on the channel. Because that'd be pretty interesting, just to kind of see, like, hey, is this... Like, when I took the conductor plate out yesterday, there was no metal on it. No shavings, no clutch material, nothing. It looked clean. So I was really impressed with that. Anyway, we're now back where we started, so... I'll wrap things up once I find somewhere to stop. Go back to comfort. Okay, so we're now back where we started. So thank you very much for watching and if you have any questions or like feedback or stuff like that, feel free to pop them in the comments. And uh, when I get back to the UK, I've got some videos that I do want to release, but I need time to edit those. I've been working here all the time, so no time for that. But yeah, I think there'll be some more cool videos on my channel, which aren't just gearbox related. You'll soon see. So anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.